welcome to a brand new week and a brand new episode of Two Girls One Gaming Topic. My name is Gemma. I'm Jessica. And I'm just going to start and put a random curveball in the episode and say hello to your mum. Oh yeah. Hi mum. <laughs> because she told Jess, when was it like, a couple of days ago? Yeah. That she, what did she say to you? That she had watched Two Girls One Gaming Cafe. <laughs> Oh, that really absolutely brilliant. So, Jess, you're going to send this after to her. Hello, Valerie. Stay safe. Keep your hands clean. And uh, it's Mother's Day here. She's always... Can... My mom's actually very good with the whole hand... She, is. she already had, like, a stock of hand sanitizer be before all this ever started. Oh, hello, Libby. Libby also <laughs> says hello. We have a team mascot down here. Um, and if you're new here, this is a playlist that is completely ad hoc compared to my other videos on the channel. Right. It's unedited unless the camera cuts out after 10 minutes and we jump back in, but everything is unedited. It is unplanned, unscripted, and uh, it was an interesting one because we actually asked you guys to vote last week on the website for which topic you guys would like to see. And the one that came back was our gaming convention is worth attending, which I actually didn't think would would be that popular, did you? Um, I don't know. I mean, I think it's a popular, like, you know, topic okay. um, within the gaming community. I, guess. I think, you know, because that's why I think about it. That's why people go to, say, your channel and others that, um, you know, take the video throughout the conventions because they want to see what it's like. We have a cat on a box. See how ad hoc this is. Hey, squeak! You can keep talking. <laughs> no, no, he's stopped. Um, he's about to knock down a whole bunch no. of stuff. But it was actually this. Let me just show you what this actually is. Um, how cool is it? Oh, I've just crushed it myself. Oh, um, no. but yeah, it's cool. Oh, sorry, Jess. How cool <laughs> is that? Um, yeah, squeak was on that. I need to find somewhere to put this. Um, so this is literally how at home this really is. We'll go ahead and we'll put it back there. Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I was just saying that that's why people watch videos of yeah, what the conventions are like. To see, um, you know, are they worth going to? Mm -hmm. And then also some just can't make it to them. So, oh you know, it's their way of... Squeak, what is wrong with you? It's going on. Yeah, I think that's a good point, actually. I think for those that can't attend conventions or retro gaming markets, it is a really nice kind of time capsule to have uh, different videos of the event, different uh, perspectives of the event, you know. Yes, different perspective, because sometimes you're caught in line. Right. And, you know, you can't see as much as you want to. Right, absolutely. Sorry to interrupt. No, 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 it's cool. It's absolutely fine. So I think what kind of sticks out for me is like, so yeah, are they worth attending, but also kind of, are they too many? So I think yes. I'm going to kind of have that in as a little sub arm to the discussion. Um, my cat's crawling all over my PC, which is not my favourite thing in the world. Um, Squeak, what's this? Come here. We're filming an ad hoc episode of Two Girls, One Gaming Topic. Why don't you come and join us? He's looking at me like this. Come on. Did you hear him? Come here, what's this? He's coming. <laughs> come here. Yay. There we go. Oh, look at this handsome boy. You just put him in your lap and cuddle him. He'll love it. I will, I will. Come here. So we're going to get into it, guys. Um, roll the intro. So, are gaming conventions markets worth attending? I think some are and some aren't. We have a myriad across the world, right up to your kind of really well-known stuff, like obviously E3 is king, and um, PAX across the US. Right. Here in Europe, we have Eurogamer, which is has now been moved to London, and there's Gamescom in Germany, which I think, to be fair, looking at it from the current conditions of what's going on, at the minute, everything is canceled, isn't it? Yeah. And quite rightly so, we know public health and all that, but yes. you know, we're kind of taking this horrific pandemic out of the equation and just kind of looking at it. I don't think every 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 convention is worth attending. So, you know, like for me last year I went to Gamescom and there were four different halls, like I was saying to you, like Sony, Microsoft, right. Nintendo, Retro Indie, so much stuff to see, so many speakers, that I actually said, I don't even want to bother with Eurogamer anymore. Right, because, I mean, once you've kind of seen all that, yeah. um, you're going to have the same games 
that um, want to be demoed and things like that at um, Eurogamer. Mm. So why bother? And it's and it, what used to tickle me before I went to Gamescom is when I used to go down to Eurogamer, right? You'd log, you'd finally sit down after three hours of queuing to say play. I remember playing three fun. hours. That might be a bit extreme. No, I'm serious. But two hours. I remember one time we waited to play um, Call of Duty. Yeah, yeah. And when you do sit down, it'll say like in one of the bottom corners, Gamescom build. So oh, yeah, I didn't notice did that. you know? Have you never noticed mm. that? I, I've seen that on quite a few of the demos down at Eurogamer. So after Gamescom all shuts down, they just ship like probably 20% of it because it, it, Eurogamer is not as big as Gamescom. They'll ship 20% of the um, games. Are you pulling that figure just out of nowhere? No. Well, I've been to Eurogamer and I've been to Gamescom, and I was so you're going off of your own. Eurogamer of it. is like watered down so bad compared to games. I just didn't know if you had the actual figure of how much was there. No. Okay, so you... I would say it's about a fifth, so about 20 You're basing it off of your experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, nah, I'm not even going to bother anymore. Um, and I said that to you, and I just couldn't... Like, had I have, like, gone... I was shocked when you... <laughs> Really? Yeah, well, when you told me that, I was like, yeah. come on, because every year she looks forward to going. Love it. Um... And if I happen to not be able to go because of a work commitment, she gets like completely gutted and upset that I can't yes. go. So And that's happened for like the last <laughs> two or three times? Two, three times? Last because I didn't go to yeah, the last year, the last few times, times in a row. That, yeah. You weren't able to go. So yeah, it is a shame. And and I think that for me, what I wanna kind of ask you guys in this video is who's been to Gamescom? In Germany and who's been to Eurogamer and maybe you might have some different obs observations between the two let me know in the comment section below well, what about what? say those that travel all the way to Gamescon and then go to say like PAX or something in the US there are those people yeah 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 there are because if you would travel to Germany for gaming why wouldn't other people absolutely and and when we were out at Gamescom um, there were people that had kind of flown in from the US, which is cool. I think it's absolutely immense. If I had the time and the additional income, I would, because I got an invite to PAX East last year, um, but I just couldn't get the time off. I just couldn't, it just wouldn't fit. It didn't work out. It didn't work out, but I did get an invite, which to sit on a panel, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, and I've never been to PAX. And I know there's like PAX East, PAX West, PAX, PAX South. South. Anything else? Have I, I missed a pack so? I don't there's, think so. <laughs> there's nothing in the north. Um, but um, yeah. Well, PAX East is in the north. It's in Massachusetts. Oh, I see. Okay. So that's fine then. I make kind of like central. central. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. The Red Sox. <laughs> what is it? See how ad, ad hoc this is? Uh, but I've actually never been to a gaming convention in the US. Have you like been to like, gaming markets, conventions? Um, no, nothing big. I didn't really start going to that kind of stuff until I went with you. Okay, okay. And do, like, even, like, for you, because obviously you like your Call of Duty, you like your Assassin's Creed, like you've said on previous episodes. Mm -hmm. If you're not as into gaming, how do you find those gaming conventions? Because I'm sure people watching this might have a brother, a sister, a girlfriend, or a boyfriend that's not really bothered but tags along. How... I wouldn't say I'm not really bothered. I'm excited until I get there and realize that we have to stand in line for hours on end to play three minutes of a game. <laughs> it's not three minutes. Come on. It's usually about 20. It, some of them. They have made them longer now. But yeah. then that also makes the wait longer. So I feel like I threw a, a fit one year because I just couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> I did. I was in line and I was just like, I was, oh, I was over it. I was like, forget it now. I'm done with this. And I did. And you're like, then leave. I was like, okay. And I just got out of line. <laughs> and I think you finally came back with your prawn. <laughs> and I've got. I like, was that like that? <laughs> yes, you were. Yes, <laughs> yes, she was. was like, well, if I have to be here, I might as well stand in line with Gemma. Yeah. And you did actually. I think you ended up filming some bits when I yeah, was yeah, playing Quadri, but. So you actually enjoy it. I mean, if you could look at it more objectively, if you had any advice for somebody that just tags along to a, a convention or a retro game market that doesn't... Okay, I'll, I'll give you some advice. Bring a little camping chair. That would make it better yeah. for me. Practical. Practical. No. So like one of those fold-out chairs, so if you're in the queue, um, that would be a kind of good way. 
Is that what yeah. you mean? <laughs> well, yeah, because think about it, you know, um, you're sat there for, or stood there actually for a period of time, like in one place before you actually yes. move again in the queue. It's not like Disney where you continue to move. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like slowly, step by step, a little bit here and there. Right. It's kind of like, while everybody's playing the game, you're all just stood still and you're waiting and waiting and waiting before you move again. And then you do the same thing. Wait, wait, wait. Right. All in one space, you know, yeah. place. So my advice is bring a little chair. Yeah. Make the most of it. Play some cards with your friends. Yeah. I don't know. Play on the People switch play, play or switches the... and things. Don't right. They? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, eat your lunch because I mean, God, it's so expensive, isn't it? It's ridiculous. But it's expensive. It's also because it's, you can save time. Like think about mm. it. Instead of taking time out of your day mm. to go get a bite to eat, um, you can actually spend more time in a queue and just eat your lunch there so that way you're not losing some of that part of the day right. where you know you're not actually getting to see a game because yeah. maybe you took um, half an hour to an hour out right. to eat you know yeah and and I think that's interesting because at the conventions you know at, we I think me and when me and Merlin went there's so much cat hair and we queued it for two and a half hours to play division two and when you've gone on it you played for 25 minutes now me and him were both like, I don't need 25 minutes on Vision 2. I think, I, I personally think 10 minutes is ample. 10 to 15 tops, because that's going to be of cues down that right. much quicker. Everybody's going to get a fairer chance to play it. Um, yeah. And, and I think that's just, on the whole, a bit more of a healthy approach. So gaming conventions are not worth it in the sense that you have to queue. And you might only get three games. It's almost like a theme well, park, I think a but, queue is but they fair. are worth it if you're going to get to play that game before anyone else, like before pre-release. Because as we know, Gamescom and Eurogamer have those kind of pre-release demos. What is this cat doing? Uh, before general release, before the holiday period. So I think definitely cutting down on, on the game time um, would probably be a bit better, do you think? I think, I mean, if it's something where they're giving you like 20 minutes, you don't need 20 minutes right. to try out a game. Because let's face it, this is supposed to be just like a demo to get a taste of the game, you know. Yes. Um, and because there are such long queues, now I get it, there's going to be long queues. I expect there to be a queue. Mm -hmm. I think that that's, you know, obviously fair. It's not like you should just walk up to a game and be able to get in. If you could, <laughs> nobody's interested in like it. Like in the retro stuff, you just know. Go up. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so, yeah, cut it down mm -hmm. a bit yeah. so that everybody has a, a bit more time. Yeah. But um, I, I, I think just kind of skipping on from that, mm -hmm. can I just say, like, retro gaming markets, I think they are amazing places to go. Yeah. Um, one thing that I, I think could be improved on is the temperature. Because, you know, no matter what, what time of year it is, if you go to, say, the Doncaster gaming market, boiling hot isn't it yeah like in the winter it's really really warm you kind of see everybody kind of stood next to the oh, study the uh, fire escape fire door so they can just get some air right. i mean it is unbelievable i would love some ac and i think the it's actually down there the retro games fair market that i went to in october that was at britannia hotel in nottingham do you know yeah really great market great vendors great vibe you know really really good sp spot everybody kind of admitted that it was just too small and you literally kind of like this you know, and I think that's difficult for people that are disabled or maybe are using some crutches or want to bring their kids in a pram or a push chair like you can't get through right and then um, so I just think like you, you've got to be that that's a downside I think to conventions and to retro gaming market so I'd like to see those things change a little bit but I get it Sometimes the more air-conditioned, nice venues are a little bit more expensive. I totally understand that, but maybe at Doncaster, just open all the fire exits. Like, let us have some air. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, do you want to add anything else about the retro game side of it? Because you've been to a lot. Or you... Yeah, when it comes to retro gaming markets, I think there's too many. What? Yeah. Well, in the UK, I can't speak for the ones in the US, I don't know, but... Um, Interesting. You know, here in the UK, it's like, every, you know... Oh, Blackpool and Doncaster and Leeds and London and um, Margate and I mean it just keeps going on and on and on and I I get it you know there are different parts of the UK not everybody can travel for them but it just seems to me that um, 
it seems like one after the other after the other after the other and I just think but look at it from a business's point of view if you had a retro game shop that's good for them because they're having more more opportunities to trade yes and no <laughs> you hesitated because you know I've got a point. I you, that's why I said yes and no <laughs> because sometimes you're getting the same audience. Like let's say Doncaster, like how many times a year? Is, I don't know. Yeah. Are there two or three? There's at least two. Now there's two. Now um, we play events and took it over. There's two. Next one's in December. Right. Okay. There used to be four. So sometimes you're reaching out to the same people. So you have to make sure that if you have a particular say. Um, inventory of games mm -hmm. that you know are the ones that you don't typically keep in store you have like yeah. you know those ones in store already but you have certain ones that you already know are packed up to go mm -hmm. to say like a gaming market right mm -hmm. but if you're going to the same like city or town then now do you have to mix it up and kind of go through everything all over again to see I, I also just think of because I'm a business owner I also just think like oh god all this stuff I have to pack because I know I have like mobile gear and then gear that stays in the studio you know and yeah. sometimes I have to I do have to go through things but I can't imagine being like a game store and having to go through all these like smaller items like all these little games I'd love and stuff. it I'd love it like you I say that now I but don't, you don't own a game no, store. no I disagree I, I don't think there's too many I think they're spread out geographically throughout the UK as they should be because you know not everybody can get up from London to Doncaster not everybody from this I area I that though that. Didn't. Yes, I did. I said I understand that people can't get everywhere. Yeah. Okay. That I, I just maybe phrase it differently. And, and yeah, you're right. They, you know, they can't. I I stopped going to the Blackpool Play Expo because I thought it was crap and uh, it wasn't worth the travel. If it was good, I wouldn't mind the travel. Right. So. Um, okay. Let me rephrase this. Maybe for me, it's not <laughs> worth it, and I think there's too many because Gemma Fair wants enough. to go to all of them. Fair play. Right? I like how you just owned that point. <laughs> Look at the cat hair, but yeah. I think I think the cats are shedding for their summer coat. Yeah, absolutely. So. Um, but let us know what you guys think in the comments section below. We've shared our thoughts and uh, I will list four brand new potential topics for the next episode that you can vote on. You can find the voting link in the description. It will say vote. Click the link next to it and it will take you straight to the page just scroll to the bottom of the page and you'll see the little survey so please do that get involved let us know what you think about this video is there anything else you'd like to say no that's everything right are we gonna do the click I, like, I go one two three click <laughs> all right yeah of course we are right guys please subscribe hit that like button please share the stream and uh, don't forget like I said vote my name is Gemma I'm Jessica and we'll see you soon three one two